Hi, global family. Welcome to the disciple making class session two, the model of true disciple making. The model of true disciple making is our Lord Jesus Christ. He called us, "Come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men." Now, this is his calling. And we can find the model of a true disciple making through Christ's calling. Before we open the Word of God today, I just want to start with this question: Who is the role model you want to resemble in your life? A girl who lost 20 kilo in six months had a role model to resemble. She put a, a particular model's photo on the door of the refrigerator so that she could look at her all the time. She was a very nice, slim, good-looking girl. That photo really motivated her to exercise every day. Now, this is a looking upon principle. When we fix our eyes continually upon someone we want to be, we will find ourselves to be more like that person as time goes by. When the gesture, uh, even the gesture, will be very similar to that person we look upon all the time. No wonder why all the couples who have been looking upon each other for a long time, living together, is very much similar to each other. In the previous session, we looked at a big picture of a true disciple making. We need the three. Great commitment to be a disciple-making church God desires. The great commitment to the great commission and the great commitment to the great commandment and the great commitment to the great master of our life, Jesus Christ. Amen? To love Him more and to be more like Him, we must fix our eyes upon Him. Let us look at the Matthew chapter 4, verse from 17 to 20. And look at your Bible, I'll read for you. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. You know, what is the calling of Jesus? I want to point out the three things here today. First, Jesus called us to live with him. Look at the uh, verse uh, 19. It starts, Come. Look at Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15 as well. He appointed the twelve, designating them apostles, that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 also says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. You know, Christian life starts with inviting Jesus into our lives as we open the door of our hearts. Then he will come and eat with us. It means that we will have a living and loving relationship with him. Now, this is the beginning of Christian life. The pr primary purpose he called us to him is to live with him. He wants us to have a banquet with him. Now, this is the beginning of a true discipleship. Enjoying his love and remaining in his love is the first step to being true followers of Christ. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Second, he called us to follow him. The second part of verse 19 says, the Follow me. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. 
You know, the first thing Jesus did every single day was to pray so that he turned his heart upon the Father. Before he started a day's ministry, he wanted to hear the voice of the Father to do his will. That is how he turned his thought upon Father's thought. John chapter 8 verse 29 shows us what the ultimate purpose of Jesus' life was. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. His only purpose in his life was to please the Father who sent him. Likewise, if we want to be true disciples of Christ, we should live our lives to please Him alone. Amen. To please Him alone, we should hear His voice every day as we turn our ears and hearts upon Him. First, Jesus invited His disciples to live with Him and enjoy true love with Him. Then He commands, follow me. This means to walk with him every single day. To walk with someone continually, what is the most important thing? Your heart should be united with the someone you walk together as you listen to him. How can he hear his voice? Jesus does not speak to us directly by physical voice, but by his word in our heart, he's speaking to us. Therefore, we should open up the Word of God and meditate on them and day and night. Then His voice is heard in our heart by the work of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 10, verse 27 says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. John chapter 14, verse 26 also says, But the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Our heart should focus on how we please God as Jesus did. Working with Jesus is the life of his disciples. To work closely with Jesus, we have to listen to his voice and follow him. There are three different voices we may hear every day in our ears of our heart. The voice of Satan, the voice of ego, myself, and the voice of our shepherd, Jesus. How can you distinguish the voice of Jesus from the other? Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 8 says, Those who live according to the simple nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Holy Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of simple man is death, but the mind controlled by the Holy Spirit is life and peace. The simple mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the simple nature cannot please God. Now, there is a beautiful African proverb concerning the life journey together. If you want to go fast, then go alone. If you want to go far, then go together. Do you want to know what God wants you to do through your life? So one thing is clear. You must learn how to hear his voice. To follow him, you must hear his voice, then you can follow him joyfully without any worries because he will provide everything to do his will for his glory. Amen. Lastly, he called us to make fishers of men. Look at the last part of verse 19. I will make you fishers of men. The ultimate purpose of Jesus' calling for his disciples is to make them fishers of men. His ultimate purpose of a true discipleship is to send them out to the whole world to reproduce other disciples of Christ through them. Jesus knew that they could not achieve this mission by human power, so he asked them to receive the special gift from a verb to carry out his mission. That's why Jesus commanded them to receive the Holy Spirit right after Jesus was resurrected. Look at John chapter 20, verse 21 to 22. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. 
as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus again promised to send the Holy Spirit before he ascended into heaven and commanded them to wait until they were clothed with the power from above. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 also says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Why do we need the power of the Holy Spirit? Because Satan, the devil, will continue to attack us so that we may not be able to witness Jesus. In the Bible, the Holy Spirit is symbolized as a water, living water, wind, oil, or fire. Fire of the Holy Spirit penetrates us. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 says, When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to the Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You can see the ordinary man Peter became an extraordinary man after Pentecost Sunday. Once he was filled with the Holy Spirit and preached the gospel, people's hearts were penetrated by the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is how they responded to the message of Peter. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot be true disciples of Jesus. To lead many souls to Christ, we should have the fire of the Holy Spirit in our preaching. Amen. The fire of the Holy Spirit penetrates our hearts, burns our sins, and purifies us to be effective witnesses of Christ. Amen. Fire of the Holy Spirit guides us as well. Acts chapter 16, verse 7 says, When they came to the border of Messiah, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them. The Holy Spirit is leading us to the right path we should take as followers of Christ in our lives. You can see how the pastors and the poor were led by the Holy Spirit in their missionary journey. That's why we call the book of Acts the acts of the Holy Spirit. To be fishers of men, we should be led by the Holy Spirit. One more thing here. Fire of the Holy Spirit ignites others. Look at the, um, Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If we then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Once the fire is ignited, it transfers to other people and other places. We call this revival. When we are on the fire of the Holy Spirit, it will transfer to others and other cities and all nations. Fire will never burn alone. It always transfers to others and moves on to other places. Amen? As I conclude the, uh, this session today, Immediately follow him. Look at verse 20 of Matthew chapter 4. At once they left their nets and followed him. In our life journey, we all need companions to work together. The best friend we need to work together is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The life of disciples is walking with Jesus. But if we have a different ways to go on our journey, we cannot go further together. The most important thing is that our heart should be united with Jesus in this journey. If we work with Jesus truly, we have to tune our thoughts and hearts upon Him every day. To do this, we have to listen to His voice. When we hear his voice, we should immediately respond to obey him as uh, his disciples did. The model of true disciple-making is Jesus. He called us to live with him, remain in his love. 
He called us to hear his voice and to follow him closely so that we may be fishers of men by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for today. We want to be true followers of Christ. But Jesus, you already show us what it means to be true followers of you. Jesus, continue to teach us by your Spirit that we may transfer the such a power of gospel to other people, to other cities, to all nations, not by human power, but by your power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.